After I heard the story, I mean, it, it touched my heart. I mean, I said, I saw this man every day. I mean, I never thought that he would be connected to me this way. He called me aside and he says, Mr. Bobby Leslie, come here. What are your grades like? I said, I'm doing quite well. He said, you know how to write? I said, I think I know how to write. He says, well, all right. Um, what do you want out of life? What? And I said, it was amazing. You know, here's this man. I know him. I know. I don't know him at all. And he's asking me, what do I want out of life? I said, well, you know, I, I like to serve people. No, don't get me wrong. I was not being um, special and building myself up in any way. When I told him I like to serve people, at that time my greatest ambition in life was to be a bartender. I wanted to, I was a, my greatest ambition, I was going to graduate from St. John's College and I was going to get a job as a bartender because I like to serve people. I like to make people happy and comfortable. He totally misunderstood. I'm sure he totally misunderstood me because he says, oh, I, I, I have a way of your serving people. He says, um, I'm running the Belize Times. My mom and my father, they came here when they were very small. They came as a political asylum due to a civil war that was happening in Guatemala. So they, they actually settled down in Las Flores, Belmopan. Um, I was born when my mom was 15 years old. My dad was also 15. I know he was extremely strict and wanted the best for the country. He had a policy every Monday morning. He hit the road to Belmopan. He leave Belize City no later than 6.15. Okay, cause come home from church, he got to leave breakfast with her and so that time they were lady. As he get to his desk, he makes sure he sit at this no later than 10 minutes to 8. And I got to know this man. I was very proud of him, um, of what he was doing to, to, to get independence for us. In the 70s was when we really got close to him because we joined with the Omero Escalante and them, the committee for Freetown. And we used to work for him. We used to campaign with him. I went along with him to, to visit the villages. Around 1974, I had the privilege to visit him, to, to, to be with, this, with him in the visit in the district, the whole district of Orange Joab, every village we went to. Because I was the MC for him, he wanted that. You know, so I, I went with him for two weeks, we were out. At that time, the roads were terrible. One time we were on our way to, to, San, to San Roman village, Rio Hondo. And the, his Land Rover got stuck. <laughs> and even Mr. Price put his, his shoulder to the wheel to, to try to lift that vehicle out of the mud to continue. And I said that that man had, he, he was so humble in the service of his people. Because I think he wanted to teach the people to be of service to everybody. He says, well, Bobby, I want you to write about 20 letters. He said, these letters are very simple letters. All I want you to put in these letters are Dear Blank, I recommend Blank for a job. Give me 20 a day. And every week I want you to give me 20. Type it out and he will put there, Mr. Murphy. I would like, uh, I, I recommend John Brown for a job. Signed, George Price. And he gave it to them. Many of those people got jobs because of those simple little letters. The committee decided they would give him a, a birthday party. And we started to serve. We said, okay, we'll serve everybody. And it's his birthday, so we decided we'd serve him. And he said, oh, no, 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 the guests first. And he got up and he started serving. The kindness and the humanity of Mr. Price came about, came came directly to my attention 
when I noticed the many people who were walking into the office, who were walking into the office during office hours with problems. Some of them with their little babies, you know, some of them crippled, different, different people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, you know, quite a lot of people are coming in. And um, he very patiently sat and listened to each one of them. As when I was born, I had a very high fever. I was very yellow. Basically, I was in very, a very bad health condition. So my dad, he was 15 years old. He was very poor. He pretty much didn't have any financial support to take me to a doctor, to a hospital. So my mom said one of the things that he decided to do was that every Wednesday, Honorable George Fries would visit Belmopan in his office and people would actually go to see him. So my mom said my dad woke up three in the morning and decided to go see him. He waited in line, he finally got to see Honorable George Price and he explained the situation to him. My mom said Honorable George Price Horry gave him around $200 and told him Horry take your son, take your son to the hospital now. And they hurry ran, they took me to the hospital where I was actually kept at the hospital for over a week. If a faucet was not working in one of the public um, the, the, we had public faucets, you have to go with your bucket. And if, if a faucet wasn't working, he would make a fuss over it, a real fuss. People need the water so that they could bathe and wash their clothes and so on. So uh, whoever minister responsible for faucets, this was prior to independence, mind you. This was the time when the British were in charge and the British had no interest in whether our bulbs were on or our water was flowing. But well, he had that interest and he made it very clear how important that was for the people, for the people who lived in the area. They had to have water, water to drink, water to wash their clothes, water to cook. I didn't know the story. Uh, actually, I'm a proud graduate of Holy Redeemer School, so I grew up seeing Honorable George Fries every day. I remember he always kept on telling me, Bobby, somebody must do the work. Why not you? Somebody must do the work. Why not you? And I think he took it upon himself. Somebody must do the work. Why not you? Let George do it. You know, in other words. You grow up learning in school that this is a national hero. So obviously every day I would go and tell him good morning, good afternoon, good evening. As a kid, you feel good. I mean, it's Honorable George Price. And then later on when my mom told me the story, I said, wow, I could have actually personally told him thank you. What I take away from him, and I will repeat it, is one, the, the lesson that you must serve, you must serve. I moved from being, from an ambition of being a bartender to an ambition of serving my country because of George Price. I graduated from Escuela Latinoamérica de Medicina, which is in Cuba in 2019. I did my internship program at KHMH. I'm currently um, working at Carl Huesner Memorial Hospital in the COVID isolation unit. That kid that he helped, that kid that he actually gave the assistance to is now a doctor today.